Well, hello, everybody. This is the Progress Report. It's Wednesday, 7 o'clock. It's always the Progress Report, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. So welcome. F- year after year after year. Year after year after year. This may be the last year, folks. We'll have to think about our grand wind-up, won't we? Maybe. 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 In any <laughs> event. Uh, <laughs> if only we could make a decision. We are we are happy to be back with you in uh, Manchester, Hooks at Auburn, and uh, those watching on the computer anywhere in the world. Uh we are here, and uh, tonight we have a very fine guest. Uh, he is an outstanding young Democrat. Don't I wish I could say I was a young Democrat? Jesus. You are, Bob. I'm young at heart. Young, at, young heart. at heart. Young at heart. I like to say that. I remember, I, I've, I've seen that picture hanging up in the Institute of Politics. Yeah. I, I, I now have a mental image of you as a young Democrat. Except at that time I was a Republican. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can't win them all. <laughs> I was for Rockefeller for president. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I was an undeclared voter for the first few years of my voting life, but uh, I, I, I never lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, here we are, and it's the getting toward the end of summer, folks. We all are aware of that. It goes by so fast. It's been a spectacular summer. We apparently avoided a tornado just north of us uh, just uh, recently. As watching, you were watching uh, you know, Channel 9. You saw the alarms about a tornado warning. Apparently we've avoided that, but maybe the severe weather isn't over, so be careful and stay tuned for that. But uh, we have been pretty lucky, Bob. I've been outside, you know, the parts of the day where there's been no rain, and then I go inside and I can hear it pounding (laughs) on the roof. I've had a lucky. I should buy a lottery ticket today. It's been my lucky. Yeah, we should be so grateful for the water we have in this state. And you hear the candidates come from uh, uh, Texas or Colorado or you know the other places where water is such a huge issue. And here we've got water. We've got water, and it's a precious resource indeed. And we've got challenges for the water, but I, that's not the, the subject. Yeah, of where are you going, show. Bob? Where are you going? I'm just <laughs> rambling on here, folks. But uh, as always, we hope you'll call in and join us, 640-3091, to join us. And tonight we are featuring, as I said, a young Democrat. His name is Gene Martin. He's an outstanding uh, member of our community here in Manchester. And uh, he's running for school board at large. It means he has to run in all 12 of our wards, which is no easy task. And, uh, and, uh, and so we're really glad that he's with us and can and talk about what's, uh, what's up with him and uh, why he's doing this and that sort of thing. So, Gene, I'll, I'll just turn it over to you. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, you know, I know you've been the city chair and been an excellent, doing an excellent job in that capacity. I know you work up at Plymouth State, not quite sure what you do up there, but and I know you have a you know a young and growing family. So Absolutely. tell us about yourself. Well, first, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my family moved to Manchester uh, 20 years ago this September. Um, so it's been it's it's been a good amount of time. But even sort of going back, you know, I think you know when I look at what's going on with the opioid crisis, I really that really affects me. One because I've had members of my family sort of struggle with that. But you know, thinking about my mom who. It was 24 year, uh, years clean last month um, of, of drugs, and we actually lived in a homeless shelter when I was a little boy for a few years, uh, when I was nine years old. And really through public assistance and through sort of good, you know, uh, government programs really helped my family um, come up, and they moved from Massachusetts to Manchester started going to Southside in the seventh grade and really have loved Manchester, lived in the lived in Ward 8 for many years, then moved downtown. And now my wife, Erin, and I uh, own a home um, over by the Puritan Back Room and just really love Manchester. And I'm so proud of all the things that have happened, whether it's Republic, you know, Boards and Brews, all these great businesses in the last 10, 20 years. I mean, you know, you, you know growing up in Manchester, it's really sure exciting <laughs> to have that when, if you think about it, 15 years ago when I was going up to college, it, it wasn't an exciting place. And so I think people should be proud of downtown. We have our challenges like with any other city, but really just thrilled about it. So um, got involved, went to college, first person in my family to go to college. So thinking about going from being a nine-year-old homeless boy living in a homeless Where did shelter. You go to college? I went to Plymouth State uh, oh, okay. and wanted to study political science. I had, I thought I always wanted to be a doctor. And then I realized uh, I didn't really like blood. Uh, so I'm glad <laughs> I figured that out, but had a great eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Courier. Uh, love uh, her. I actually just heard that she's still around. So she lives in, in Candia, but I, w- I want to um, be able to chat with her to let her know that she's had such a sort of key role in my life. But she talked about... Isn't it interesting? I think everybody we, we meet 
I certainly can think of one myself, I bet Mike can, a teacher who made a real difference in our lives. We don't appreciate them enough. She was an interesting character. She used to have a um, little mini fridge in the back of her classroom, and she would chomp on sunflower seeds and drink Pepsi throughout class. And I just remember she would quiz you on states and capitals, but really fantastic and sort of, uh, I think just through that, fell in love with U.S. history and government. So went to Plymouth State to get a political science degree. Love that, really sort of branched out, got involved, ended up interning in the state senate, then working in the state senate. You know, for me and my background, I just always wanted to get back. I felt that my mom was a social worker after she's in helping people uh, the way she was helped. And so I thought it was really important to be able to give back and love to be involved in the community. And, you know, it's one of the things that, you know, we have a six month old daughter who's a, a, is a handful, but a really exciting challenge to have for anyone who's a parent or has, has, has been one. It's really a great thing and, you know, love our city and um, saw sort of some, some struggles in our schools and never thought I would ever run for school board. Not something I ever thought that I would do, but um, excited to sort of take on the challenge. And well, is this your first run for public office other than running for party offices? I, I, I ran for state rep once when I, you know, I think Barack Obama really excited a lot of folks. Yes, indeed. Um, and, you know, he's sort of, and he's always been really clear on this, you know, it's not just about me, it's about other folks. If you want to see change, go be that change and lace up your mm -hmm. sneakers and get out there. And so I took that to heart, uh, ran, um, didn't win, you know, when I was in, in college and sort of uh, took that in, in, in stride, but sort of went on and you know, I got to work in state government, so that was a great experience. But, um, you know, uh, this would be my first uh, run for municipal office, definitely citywide, which is a huge um, it's a heck of an undertaking. A, a huge undertaking. Uh, some might say a little crazy for the first time, but you know, I just I felt at the time we needed someone who was gonna, actually going to think about students. You know, the mayor said something uh, once, and this is what kind of got me thinking about a few different events happened. I was together with people I went to middle school with. Um, half who have left Manchester, which is really sad. One who lives in Keene, won't hold that against her. But someone who, is, who lives in Manchester now just bought their house and said, we're going to live here for four years until we have kids and then we're going to move out. And I thought to myself, what? Yeah, that's not good news. For that's, 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 that's a that's big not, problem for the city. It has been for a long time. It has. It's, it's been a struggle here. And people say the schools, and I think, you know, I think it's easy to say, well, we could go and do this. We could go move to Hooksit or Bedford or Concord or any of these communities. But I think we need people... You know, just not move, but actually get involved and try to make a difference. So that's why I'm running. I'm hoping, you know, that's the opportunity that I have um, and really have enjoyed learning. I thought I knew a good deal about uh, the schools, but just talking to folks door to door, hearing from teachers, hearing from students. What's really remarkable is hearing from folks I went to high school with who are now working in schools that we went to and what they're saying and how honest they are and how they. F and I said, well, wh why haven't you ever come and spoken to a meeting? And said, well, we're afraid of the school board, we don't, we think that we wouldn't be listened to and we feel like we would be reprimanded. And I thought, wow, like, can you imagine if you were working somewhere else in any field and you couldn't go and tell the folks that, you know, that who ran the, the show, like the board of directors, here, there's a problem here. And so I think there's a whole culture change on the school board, but, you know, realistically, I, I think we need, have a lot of work to do and really, you know, I'm a planner and a doer, and so I think we really need to get together. I love what Manchester Proud is doing. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. That seems to me one of the most really pieces of good news in this city in a long time, along with things like the, uh, you know, oh, let's, let's, let's back Institute. it up a minute. We've got, we've got viewers watching. Oh. Tell us a little bit about what Manchester Proud is. You know, Absolutely. let's not make the assumption yeah. that everybody is, is right. on board with that. Absolutely. So Manchester Proud is a group of uh, community business leaders, teachers, people who are just engaged, members of the community, and want to make a difference. So they started off, it's a 13-month project, um, and really trying to do um, really local organizing in the sense of what's going on with our schools, what do we think our schools should be, and talking to key constituency groups, and then I think putting together a plan. And so they've raised private dollars, which again, I think, you know, in the city, we really have to think about how we're working with Businesses, I have friends in the business community who say, Gene, we, this is the kind of thing we want to get involved with. We're happy to help pay money for the superintendent search, but that's probably not the best use of my, my $15,000. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, how do I help students directly? And so I think Manchester Proud is a great organization. I hope they stay around for a long time. I think it's important to have folks push the elected leaders, right? I think when you serve in elective office, you're responsive to those leaders. And so I hope the plan they put together um, is a good one. And one, I think the new board hopefully can take and look to see, okay, what works? How do we implement this? And how do we do it 
in the first year, the second year, the third year, you know, if you if you look on the, the city's uh, website, the, the school district's website, you can't find a strategic plan. If you type in the word strategic well, plan, we can, can talk about that. There are there are funding reasons for that. There are a lot of reasons for that. And there, there's there's a lot of issues that I hope we get to talk to in the, in this hour. One of them being the actual the ethos, the the character of the school board, and and how intimidating it is to to the people that are in the trenches. Um, but before we do that, we have a caller, okay. and we always love our callers. And this is a regular caller. I think it's Eddie. Eddie, Hello. welcome back. How are you, Eddie? How, how you, on you the doing? Air. Happy you? Happy Wednesday, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Yeah, hey, great show. Uh, I'm, I'm watching with interest, right, because I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, Gene Martin's campaign, and I keep waiting for a specific, but I, I haven't heard one yet. Um, well, heck, the show just started, Eddie. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> even gotten well, to the first break. Oh, <laughs> well, here's a, you, you know, <laughs> Eddie. Go ahead. Okay. Can, can you tell us his input on Common Core? Did he thumbs up or thumbs down on Common Core? Absolutely. So I think, you know, the, you know, Common Core is how, you know, here's at the end of the day is that I think our problem in our district is I think we don't empower teachers. And if you talk to teachers, they'll tell you that they don't have a voice in actually the curriculum. So that we adopted the Manchester standards. You know, again, that was what this the previous school board adopted. You know, again, I think curriculum always needs to be changing. You know, for me, I think we don't teach folks enough. Um, Eddie and I would hope that you would agree with this, but I don't think we teach students practical skills for the real world. How to balance a checkbook. How to balance a checkbook. How to, what is a 401k? I just, uh, just coming in well, here, you know, like those sort of things that I think that I never learned in school. And again, I grew up in a household that, you know, my parents, you know, uh, one parent had a pension. The other, again, was a social worker. So I, I luckily had a boss when I turned uh, 27 who said, you know, Gene, you should really think about your future and you start putting money away. We have to help students with those practical skills. So I think for specifics, if you're talking about it, I think we don't, our district doesn't have a plan. And so I think people can say we have challenges, but what's our plan? You know, I think if you're All running... Right, so I'll take it that's a thumbs up for Common Core. Uh, when you say balancing, a well, we don't we don't have Common no, Core, no, Eddie. No, Eddie no, we don't have Common that's Core. That's not a thumbs up for Common Core. It, it, Manchester, it, it, Eddie, Eddie, way. hold on, hold on. You're not you're not listening. He, he, we do not use Common Core here in Manchester, and he did not say that's a, that he's, he supports Common Core. He said that curriculum has to be changed constantly. It's not Common Core. And he and in his answer, and, and you got to be fair. His answer was not thumbs up to Common Core. His answer was, and uh, and he can st state it again if he wants to. But as I heard it, we have to constantly be reevaluating and changing curriculum. And here's some definite ideas that I'd like to add to the curriculum. I don't see that as a thumbs up to Common Core. Well, I, I asked him thumbs up or thumbs down. He, you know, I thought that. But listen, we'll move on. We'll move on. Go ahead and give us your input on the uh, current situation with the MEA. Any input on that? You know, I contract absolutely. Eddie, I tell you what, what we'd like to do because what you're doing is you're hijacking the show. These are questions that we were going to get to. The show just started. Well, Can you give us a I, list? I, give us I, a list I, of I, questions I, you want to ask, and we'll we'll go to them. Give us a list of the show. I don't want to hijack the show, but uh, listen, mathematics that teaches you how to balance a checkbook. But listen, I'll all right, I'll hang up. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I, I I I hope I gave him the opportunity to ask the questions he wanted to ask. Um, MEA. He did. He did ask the question for the MEA. Um, I, it was a very general question. Do you have any uh, general opinions we, on? You know, I, I'm every, not sure where he was going. With absolutely. That. For every, we need. You know, we need both sides to come together and work on a contract. I think we're not making progress. So I think it is really incumbent on the vice chair of the board because it's important to realize most people don't know this because people going door to door think the mayor has control over this process. She doesn't. You know. Ginta didn't, Gatsis didn't, Baines didn't, Wazorek. You know, how, how does it piece. happen? You know how it and, happens. And, and so, so, you know, really, you, you know, this is uh, driven by a board. For every, you know, and, and, and hopefully Eddie knows this, but for every day that we waste not having a contract, we have, earlier the beginning part of summer, we had 100 vacancies. 100 vacancies out of, you know, 11, 1,200 people. I was just talking to a a teacher who said they left Manchester and they going to Exeter, they got a $15,000 uh, raise just because of the way the steps are. Again, if you're a teacher and, you're, and you haven't been getting a step increase, 
for four years, you would probably leave your job. And I think that's an unfortunate thing. In the private sector, if you worked in a private sector job, and you didn't get a raise for four years, you probably would go somewhere else. And so for you, any I would be very careful walking on that ice, Gene. The private sector has not gotten a raise in 10 to 12 years. So th that assumption is, is is not an assumption that I would want. Well, to not in the private sector, have for sure. You know, you know, I think you know. The again, CEOs have. You know, you know, chatting right. with a good number of my friends who were, you know, people get raises, you get bonuses, you get these sorts of um, things. So I think that sort of thing. But to the point of the contract, both sides need to work and remedy this because again, we're on multiple months, and again, it doesn't help our students to not have teachers in the classroom. Be down a hundred people, and again, I don't. That was a number that I heard in July. I don't know where we are, but I think resignations are still coming out. But those are sort of things I think we need to remedy. You know, again, if the team isn't working, then then the vice chair of the board should sub out those people and change the process. Because you know, at one point, if you, if that committee is not working on a resolution, you know, we need one. So it's it's those folks that are on there. Many of them who are not running again. I think only one of them. I think only Jimmy Lahu is the only person who's running again uh, for the school board so it's a problem yeah it sure is uh, and but I just want to interject one more thing this is this this is labor negotiations gun governed by the NLRB there are federal laws in place um, you can't just go in and blow up negotiation there's a process that has to be followed there are so, rules of the road that have to be followed so um, it you know it it, it it's very easy from the outside to, 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 to throw rocks at the process, but Absolutely. if you're not involved in it in the trenches, you might yeah. want to hesitate a little bit to, before doing that. It's very tricky yeah. business. Well, I think, and again, I think the question is, what's the progress being um, made? You know, the other thing, too, is I, I think we really should have, I think it's strange to me that we don't have um, a person that's, that works in the city, whether it's a contractor or not, that actually isn't one person who's actually our negotiator. I know, uh, I believe Gas has tried to find a person. We, we couldn't hire that person, but you think about it, you know, again, and, you know, and, and again, you know, I'll, I'll say this about Rich Gerard. I appreciate his service, because I can imagine, and I believe him, you know, he says it publicly, it's a lot of hours, and no volunteer, because you get it paid a small stipend to serve on the school board, but you're a volunteer, you're working a lot of hours for that. And again, I think, you know, could we be better served if you had chief negotiator for the city a that professional the negotiator professor. that could deal with all of the collective bargaining issues exactly. in the city. Do other cities have that? There, um, I believe Nashua does, um, you know, at least on the city side, you know, my guess is we have someone who's there, you know, again, I'm finishing up a master's in public administration. One of the classes you have to take is our negotiations. This is not a uncommon thing to have this. I mean, this is always going to be a, a, a problem, but I think for that, it's a huge thing facing the, the city and we, we have to resolve it and, mm. and again mm. I, I just wonder you know I just think about the students because I think that's important we always have to remember the students and for every day that goes past in the <coughs> summer that we haven't had any progress there's more teachers that are leaving and I think yeah that's, that's, and, I, that's and I think it's a problem and, and that's been a problem though that's it's not like this is new it's it's like oh well, Christmas is back again it happens pretty much every cycle um, we really and and later on in the show we're coming up to our break but I want to talk about some potential changes to the structure of, of, of how the school um, district is is structured and how that might help the situation but uh, we got to go to break first yeah we'll take a quick break folks we'll be right back with Gene Martin call us at 640-3091 like Eddie did we'd love to hear from you
So this is the progress report for this Wednesday, August 18th. Uh, no, no, 21st. 21st. Oh, man, am I... <laughs> uh, I need a keeper. Anyway, uh, we are no, here because the municipal elections are coming up soon, and there's a lot of very interesting elections, starting at the very top with our our mayoral candidates, uh, Joyce Craig, uh, uh, certainly our candidate here on the Progress Report. Uh, Did the editorial uh, board ever uh, ever make a decision on that? <laughs> you want to <laughs> take a vote right now? <laughs> uh, we definitely want choice back. Oh, do we ever? Uh, particularly, couldn't couldn't agree more. Don't get me wrong. Particularly given the opponent out there. I'm actually saying that for Gene's benefit. I think I responded <laughs> to Gene by saying we, before we could book him, we had to have the editorial. But we have an, we have an outstanding that. candidate here for uh, school board at large, which means. Uh, Gene Martin, as our guest, has to run in all 12 wards in Manchester, and uh, and uh, that's a that's an enormous undertaking because he has he has a uh, young family. Uh, how old's your daughter now? Six months. Six months. Wow. And that's You've got a, a long ways to go, brother. That, that's that's <laughs> that's a big deal. He has a full time job. Do you still do right at Plymouth? And what, what is your job up there? It so says I am a development officer, so uh, scholarships was really important to me. I wouldn't have been able to go to school without that, so I spent a lot of time working with our alumni and friends and raising money um, to support the institution because, as you know, we get less than 10% of our budget from right. the state. And so right. for in order for most people to go, you know, nine out of ten people who go to Plymouth have a scholarship or some sort of financial aid package. Has no. the school ever considered taking the word state out of their title? Because, <laughs> I mean, does 10% really entitle? You don't get that naming rights for the Civic Center down here for that kind of money. You know, I mean, it's... Well, especially, you know, when you, when you look at the population that Plymouth serves, um, you know, 43% sure. of people at first and family go to college. 40% of people don't, I think, realize 40% are low, what we sort of call low income that so they're at the poverty line or below, which is really sort of astounding. So anyway, so it's, it's great work. I love the job that I, I do uh, there. And, you know, education, again, is important to me. One of the reasons why I'm running for the school board, because I think we need solid folks who are going to be able to plan and make uh, a difference at our local level. So this, the, what Gene reminds me was that saying, I don't know, it was attributed to, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. <laughs> and uh, I think that's perfectly true. I mean, it, a busy person can take on things and fit it in because they, they, they have the energy and the skills to do that. And I think Gene's one of those people. So we were talking about some of the problems with the Manchester schools. And I think that we probably would agree that the major problem is not with this, the, 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 the administration or even the faculty. It's with the perception that uh, Manchester, because it has Manchester being the biggest urban center of the state, with all the diversity we have here and the immigrant community that's settled here, languages in and the all the languages that are spoken and the, the task Boy. of teaching people, you know, some important skills like speaking the language of this country. All the ELL learners, ELL, all, 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 all the, that. Reduce, the reduce and free lunch. And we, we have teachers doing heroic jobs here in the city of Manchester. We have City Year, which is a tremendous asset to our schools in those schools where it serves. And, uh, and yet the perception is that... Uh, uh, as Gene mentioned, that um, too many people are saying, well, I'm going to live in Manchester till my kids need to go to school and then I'm going to go somewhere else. And that's the number one thing that I think could drag our city down, which is otherwise doing just spectacularly well in so many ways with our, uh, our, our downtown lively scene Absolutely. and our theater and arts and uh, uh, culture that we've got here and the diversity. It's all wonderful. But this is a real problem. So we're very fortunate that we have people like Gene Martin, who's a young person, uh, he's still a young Democrat, uh, to be willing to commit to this race and then to the very considerable task of serving on the school board, where the meetings tend to go on quite a while. Yes. And uh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, you I was, I, you I just, to bring up. When you say the meetings tend to go on, it triggered my thought. Um, could you comment a little bit on what you would bring to, uh, I, I want to choose my words carefully, well, that would be different. And, uh, it would. It would. It, it, I usually don't hold up like this, but there seems uh, sometimes there's a lack of civility. It, it seems to be in, in our maybe in our culture a little bit more. We're we're getting a little bit rougher uh, around the edges in the way we deal with people, especially you know on on uh, electronic communication. People are really tough behind a computer screen, Sorry. tougher than they are maybe in person. But I think. Um, uh, people have been more willing to embarrass somebody else in public and that kind of thing. And I think some of that's leaked onto our school board. That, that's Absolutely. my setup. Do you have any thoughts on, on, on how we can 
rein that in on, on how we can get the school board to all pull in the same direction to accomplish something. Part, part of, I think, exactly, and I appreciate that, one of the things, and it's tough to be able to do because of the right to know aspect of this, but one of the best boards I ever served on is we had meetings, we sort of worked with the folks that we served, and we had sort of a... Um, a time where we spent time together and we got to know each other one on one and I think that time really matters so you know it sounds like oh let's go on a retreat but I think that really makes sense you really have to be friendly with someone and you know I think about maybe I don't agree with you on this issue but you have to have that sort of a level of civility to be able to let someone finish a thought and again you know part of it too is I think for some of our school board members not saying every thought that you I think that's why the meetings sometimes are a little long is because just because you have a Something to say doesn't mean you should always say it, yeah, which I think the, is the phrase. It, everything's already been said, but it hasn't been said by everybody yet. Cor so. Correct, <laughs> and I think that's some of the challenge. But I, th I do think we have to figure out how do we actually. And again, you know, I think any book, you know, there's great books that are written about how boards work together and solve problems and actually have. Co so I, I think those are the things we need to do. And I would look at the superintendent. I think uh, Dr. Vargas. You know, I know he he gave a book of good governance to the school board members. I don't know how many of the folks read it. I know everyone's busy. Uh, but I, I do think that has to be a process and you know I would hope to say sort of a, let's get together and again you have to be careful because when you get the whole group together if you have a quorum yeah, that's a quorum <laughs> so that's sort of something I, you know again again I think that still is uh, you know the lawyers we have to kind of figure that out of what we can do what are best practices but I just think there has to be something there we can work together you know I think for example people I may disagree with on the board people still have good ideas and I think we have to work together and again it's for the students I think something that the mayor that kind of really drew me um, into the in the race and thinking about it was that at one meeting and she says this often but we're here for student success and achievement and that should be our focus and I just think some of the trauma and the bitter uh, you know bickering back and forth I just think is unnecessary it doesn't help our students it doesn't help folks like me you know when I was a student I really needed those strong teachers I needed those resources to be able to go and go to college or go to a trade school or have the skills again like I was talking about when when any called I don't think we prepare our students enough to just graduate and go into the workforce you know how do you actually address an envelope you know all these sort of skills you know how do you talk on the phone I remember having interns and they actually used to teach that when I was in school they actually used to teach that what words to use how late was too late to call I can recall this and I guess there are other things that are getting in front of that that are deemed more important but I can recall getting that kind of education yeah. but I, you know again so I, I just think back, have to look back at in the one room schoolhouse I went to you know what I mean well, <laughs> and, and, and that's where I think we need to get folks you know think about you know folks that work at Silver Tech some of our other great companies you know pill pack all these great companies that are that are um, in the mills or in the city that are really key leaders and supporters of whether Manchester Proud or been involved in what are they looking for? What do our students need? And how do we, again, continually update curriculum? Because I think, you know, folks can say, well, we pick this or we pick that. You know, every three years we should be looking at it and what the market needs. You know, again, I, I work at Plymouth and one of the things that our president has always said was we should be developing our curriculum so we're, so we're uh, putting out students that can go and get jobs. You know, I think the reality is not everyone's going to college. I think that's okay. So no, we have to do that. I'd push back a little bit on that. I have no problem with that. But we also need to get, educate our students so they can be good citizens. Absolutely. I mean, the citizens. Yeah, they've stopped uh, teaching civics. Uh, it, it's, it's civics. It's, it's, it's the history of our civilization and other civilizations. I don't want to make it just Western-centered anymore. Uh, that was a, too much of an emphasis for too long. But the, uh, other great world civilizations, the thoughts of the great thinkers of the past, I think the, the, these things should be brought to the, to the, to the, as part of the education, too, along with practical stuff. Absolutely. And I think, you know, in Manchester, we, we, we tried to move pretty far on that front too haven't we with the uh, the programs with West and the businesses Absolutely. and uh, you know and the community college and uh, all that sort of thing so there's, some, there's been some good things happening Absolutely. there, hasn't there? But it, Absolutely. But I think we could always improve. I think we should always be looking to those sorts of things. The other thing is you know what I haven't seen is we have 20 odd presidential candidates and to me it's not about a party it's not about getting folks but it's just having the one be excited about the process and giving them in you know I remember Wesley Clark, I believe it was Wesley Clark, mm -hmm. came in and spoke at Memorial. And I remember thinking, that's pretty cool. You know, and I don't know if our, any of these presidential candidates that are running, you know, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, if you're coming into schools. And I think about for New Hampshire, especially in Manchester, because most candidates 
come to Manchester mm-hmm. because, you know, we're the, probably the best place in the state to be. But again, how do we, are we embedding that in the curriculum? Are we talking about our key place in that? Do we have that? You Boy, know, if, if they're missing their chance to go to our schools, particularly high school, yeah, I can recall they're many. making a big mistake. I, I, those I haven't, I those haven't kids a, talk to their parents. I, exactly, I haven't seen a I single. I can recall many assemblies at Memorial. You mentioned that. I, I'm, Ron Reagan came to Memorial. I, I believe Jimmy Absolutely. Carter came and spoke at Memorial. I, yeah. can, I can remember many I, I, presidential And maybe I've missed it, but I haven't seen a single thing in the newspaper or on TV or anything about a presidential coming in and speaking to, you well, it's know, been the class. summer too. Classes exactly. don't start until you know. I'm sure that there's going to be more. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully this them. fall they're coming in. But I, I think that's a great <coughs> opportunity. To your point of how are we? Again, it's not about a party. It's about being involved with the process because I think that, especially my generation and earlier, because we're already getting out of the millennials and going to the next level. Um, you know, I think people think, well, why should I be involved? It's not going to change. And the reality is. You have to change it. If you if you don't believe someone's going to do it, you're the one to do it. So I think, and I'm, I'm thrilled that we have so many young folks, and not that there's anything wrong with folks who are more young at heart, but I think it's great to have young parents running for the school board because the reality is, right, my daughter and hopefully – Hopefully a son. Hopefully my wife's not watching. But, you know, hopefully another son or two, <laughs> three more kids. Hopefully that will happen in the future. Um, but, you know, we really – it's our its our city. And, you know, like the reality is we're going to live in it. Our, our kids are going to grow up in it. And if we want to live here and we want our property values to be good, we need good schools. That's thats what really what matters. And that is what Manchester Proud was inspired by and what they're all about. Thank you, Barry Bresinger. And, uh, and uh, Dick Anagostas and that, and uh, of course Bob Baines. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I mean, those those people and their 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 colleagues in this effort are really doing a tremendous thing for this and, city. And I, I ho- give them a shout. I completely out. agree, and I hope they stay around because we need them not for just this year for the next. 10 years because we we need them to be Manchester needs that Manchester is Absolutely. built on volunteerism under a very very thin skin under this city uh, it's the volunteers that are out putting their shoulder to the wheel grabbing an oar and pulling whatever you Absolutely. want to call it that get this city done um, because we're on a tight budget we, you know, we do not have the resources um, that we need to move the city forward. We're barely treading water on, on, on our tax revenues right now. Uh, but we need to promote the volunteerism. We need to promote the business community. We need to promote people like yourself getting involved and, and, and realizing, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be putting in hours. And, and, and we need to get that damn state budget approved so we can exactly. help for our schools well, and our municipality. It's a yeah. it's a disaster that Governor Sununu vetoed that budget. It's a disaster for the state, but especially for the city of Manchester. 50, my understanding, and thank you, Bob, for your work, $15 million in the education side, another $5 million yep. Yep. for the city side. Think about that. what that could do yep. to Manchester. And, again, that's not – that's money. I think people don't realize – the formula, that's Manchester dollars going to Portsmouth or going to other communities, and that money should be in Manchester. We need it. And so, so it's a shame it. that we don't have it because that, that could yeah. help our schools. And, again, think you know one of the things I've chatted about, and um, Mayor Gint actually talked about it, um, you know, in the state level, we have a two-year budget. And I think it's strange that we do a one-year budget and we're not able to plan effectively. And the, the example that I would use is um, – People talk about access to technology, and again, you would, I was a visual learner. I like to see things. You know, you can have someone talk to me, but and I would write my notes, but I really needed to see that. I needed, you know, that process. Sure. And I think that we don't have enough technology in classrooms. And you know, maybe you can't put a, maybe you can get some donations and some partnerships. But you know, you go to a college campus, you know, even a state university, and you have a projector in the ceiling and you have a computer cart. And now maybe those computers are five years, six years old, but you have that. And again, in a budget process, we talk about this, but we're not acting. And this is where I think the school board follows this. And again, that's the workplace. You were just talking about the workplace. In my workplace, we, we have big big screen TVs like we have behind us right here at just about every workstation because we're not using paper anymore. Everything's electronic. And, and you have to be able to, I, I work in construction, it's plans. You have to see the large formats. Absolutely. But um, these kids have to be ready. If they're, if they're working with pencils, and they get out into the workforce, and, and they haven't been taught how to balance their checkbook. They're going to be in trouble. They don't even know to show up to work on time. Exactly. No, and that's sort of, but again, the the planning, and this is where I think I bring. I, I really am a planner. I kind of tell the story. We had a group of people all get together for New Year's Eve a few years ago, and it was a bunch of groups of different friends. I actually wrote like a, a little memo with their names and faces and the photos, so everyone sort of would know who was going. Right? Like that's a level of planning that I sort of like that nerd level of planning that I would bring to this. And I think again. 
you don't have that. If you look at, if you, again, I was looking for the strategic plan after I decided that I wanted uh, to run after talking with a few folks, and I went on the website, couldn't find it, and maybe it's there, but I think if you type the word strategic plan in the search, you would hopefully find it. That would be where you could <laughs> Couldn't find it, but I did find an audit from 2013 in June, and it talked about our, our, our challenges in the curriculum. And you read that, and I think that document could have been written yesterday. And where have we progressed? And I think this new superintendent, again, on the school board, my, my goal is going to be, superintendent, what are the things? Come to us with a list. Again, get that input from teachers. I think Manager Proud is doing a great job of working with community members, all these sort of things. But we need that list. What are those 10 things that we need to do to make our school district the best we possibly can? And, you know, we can't do it in one year. We can't do it in two years. Can we try to do it in five? Can we try to do it in 10? I just think that we talk about the same things, but we're not acting. And I think that's really, for me, I really, I like to create a to-do and I like to check, you know, that off and sort of go through the process. So I sort of, I would think I would bring a real um, focus to that. And I, I think that we just don't have that. If you watch those meetings, you don't hear, okay, we're going to do this. Let's do it by this day. There's no real plan. I think that's a problem. And again, you know, think about a, whether you're a construction business, you know, even a law practice, you, you have a plan of how are we going to survive this year as a business and deadlines to accomplish. exactly and you know the school district we don't like to think about it but the school district is a business they provide a service to students they're responsible to taxpayers and parents and everyone else but we have to have that and we have to have a plan google has a plan you know um apple has a plan when they roll out their phones all the other things we should be foolish not to think that our school district shouldn't have a plan you know and a point i'd like to make to eugene um and i've made it here on the show many times uh, my granddaughter gets one shot at the eighth grade. If the city of Manchester boots it, we don't get to do it again. Exactly. She's moving through. And everyone's kid is in the same situation. We do not get a do-over. We have to get it right on the first pass. Yeah. And I don't know we, if we're actually doing that. Wait, well, and we that, had a call coming in? No, not yet. Okay. Well, and that, that was one of the reasons, you know, I talked to a, f uh, a few friends, said to me, Gene, you should, you should wait, you should wait, you know, maybe five years, 10 years, you know, you have a young family. I thought to myself, well, to your point, well, okay, so when the election happens, you have a first grader. By the next election, that person's in third grade. How many, you only have one shot at the first grade, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and the studies show that if you aren't able to read and you're not at grade level by H, uh, by grade three, you know, it's hard. I mean, you could do it, but it's hard your to Your curve do, has been you, bent. You know what I mean? And yep. like, that's just the reality. We have to be fact-based and evidence-based and sort of go that. So I think there's lots of things to be done. And I think we'll have a new group of people who are coming in, hopefully going to try to get some things done to help our students. Very good. I think that's a good time to take our second and yep. final break, which is indicated to be due about now. So I guess we'll Moving do that. Moving through. And again, the number is 640-3091. We've got an outstanding candidate here running for school board at large and Gene Martin, and a uh, dynamic guy for sure. And uh, you've got some thoughts you'd like to share with him or us, we'd welcome you to do that. Any Please other call. specifics? We're trying to hit specifics. If we, if, if we're, we're going to a few specific specifics, issues we're going to take call. up with Gene when we come back on the other side of this break in just a very brief, brief moment.
Hey, everybody, this is the final segment, the third segment of this week's progress report for Wednesday, August uh, 21st. And we have a call. We have we our do. friend Eddie is yeah. back with us. We're happy to have him back. And We're I want to put him right on. Eddie, if I was too harsh, I apologize. Welcome back. Welcome back, Eddie. I apologize if I was too harsh. I, I uh, just wanted a chance to give give Gene a chance to answer some questions. But I hear you got another specific one. 30 seconds. Oh, that's all right, Mike. Mike, I just want to praise Bob, Bob Backus, okay? Because, and what I mean is your guest has talked about sending kids to school to learn about balancing checkbooks, 401Ks, and what employers want. And Bob was quite right when he said the reason we send people to school it basically is to expand the mind, to teach them about the history of our country and the history of our world, amongst other things, literacy, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just, I think Bob hit the nail on the head and there's an overemphasis on what things like what employers want. And it's my second call, so I'm just going to keep leave it at that. 30 seconds. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> no, he makes well, a good point. I get praised by Eddie. That's a, he, that's he, a good night he, for he me. He does make a good point. We, we, you know, and, 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 and uh, you know, we, we were talking about the practical aspects, and there are certain practical aspects of education that are not getting done. And I'm, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed of bringing that up. Um, but, heck, I, I'm, a, I'm a liberal arts guy. You know, I'm a history major, man. I, 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 I get what Eddie is mm -hmm. saying. Um, it's you, a good. It's a good balance. I think you want a literate. You want a. You want a cultured society. You you want people that are able to engage in conversation. When you look back, if you've taken any history, and you look back at colonial times in those taverns, um, those farmers and and blacksmiths were were engaging in a very high level of political discourse. Absolutely. And I'm not so sure that that's what's happening in our society Absolutely. today. And um, no. so Eddie makes a very good point. Bob, you of course made a, made, made a good no, point. I, I, I think I think it's a good balance. I'll tell you when I go and I talk to folks on doors they talk they the first thing to talk about is how are we helping my student my child have a bright future which is always job so that's why to yeah. me i bring it up because that's what parents voters taxpayers are talking about so i so I, again i you know i uh i would love if i had the time to go get a master's in the classics because i think that's an important sort of thing to have and know and you know i, you I, really I enjoy it i, 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 I was part of the first humanities core curriculum at saint a's so i you know, you know I, I think that's important that's but i do think we have to remember that we're trying to set students up for a future and love of learning i mean you know before i started my graduate program i read 54 books in one year right so like i love reading and i love sort of off topic things but um so i think it's it's important but yeah <laughs> so we were going to bring up a couple other particular issues with Eugene. Of course. One is the uh, the effort uh, led by Pat Long, who I hope will be our alderman again here and representing Ward 3. I think he will be. I certainly hope so. He's a great contributor to our city. And in Concord, he's pushed uh, a bill to at least consider that uh, that Manchester should be able to have its uh, school district have its own revenue raising authority, its taxing. Well, that's just authority. one of the many options. It's it's, it's one of the many a options. Wide open. T let's have a look so, at the structure. And I and I've had to comment in the past about, you know, one thing we have in Manchester. Everybody agrees is excellent, is our public water supply. We have you know the, unexcel water quality, and, and uh, plenty of quantity, and you know you look at it and you say well the. Uh, the water department gets to raise its own resources. It, it can send out bills for your water usage. Uh, do you think maybe the school district should have that same uh, potential and w would that help the problem? We know there's one other city, at least one other in, in, in New Hampshire, Concord, that does have a, uh, the, the school district does have revenue authority. What's your thoughts on that? I, you know, I think uh, I appreciate Pat Long and his view. I do think that Manchester should have, the school board should have that authority, although I do think you know, I, I think if it happens, I think the only way it's going to pass if it's subject to a tax cap, which I would support because I think it's important to have that. I think it's unfair to a school board member. If I was on the school board and Eddie calls me and he says, you know, I'm upset about the schools, what's going on? And I said, well, it's that alderman. Call Bill Barry, call Danny O'Neill, call these all, you know, um, all these folks. I think it's unfair to sort of say, and again, in the city side, they're picking so many, they have so many priorities. And I think the school board should have its own taxing you know authority i think that's something that you know concord has it but i do think that it you know if it's going to pass I, I do you know i would support it to a tax cap and let folks be able to to do that i i think that's so you support the tax cap i i think the only way that manchester voters are going to pass 
the school funding taxing authorities with a tax cap. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and, and I think that's, and I think that's uh, the only... You're a pragmatist. That's and, and I think that's the only thing, you know, pragmatic, again, yeah. you know, I, th I think that's the reality. And again, you know, I, I think we can't, you know, folks can say that the tax cap this, but people have voted for it. I think mm -hmm. we have to respect that. And so I think that's sort of a But thing. even under that scenario, it allows the school board to have more long-range exactly. planning, which is what we were talking before. Instead of going hat in hand every year, year upon year, you had great plans for, for a, a three-year project, and the funding was cut after year one. So that got scrapped. And and that's part of the this kind of a lack of continuity of policy in our school exactly. board. Well, and, and to your point, and that's where I think that it helps you. We're talking about technology in the classroom. If we really want to do that, you, you can't, can't do, do that in one, one year. year. No. <laughs> you know, can you do it in three? Can you do it in four? Maybe, you know, given our situation, probably five, right? But you have to start that, and you just can't say, well, let's hope we get it from the city side. You can't you know? enter a contract not knowing you're exactly. going to be able so, to So I think that's, for all the purposes, again, you know, any business that has a strategic plan has this, thinks long term, and again, I think it's just unfortunate that our school district doesn't think in that way. And I, you know, again, I have lots of hope. I love the fact the superintendent has said, I want to be here for five years, but really I want to be here for 10. We need that. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about the superintendent. Yeah, we've had a lot of short term superintendents and, 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 and I think, you know, you think about it again, CEO, you, you need someone who has been there for a long time to have leadership and really be able to make a difference. It takes a long time time you know I think even one term on the school board two terms it's gonna take a little bit of time you know, talking to you know folks who've been I on I think the, it takes a long time to turn out a really excellent teacher I mean exactly I, I think that's a very demanding you profession know, and, and it's definitely a professional skill and I think it takes a time to have a teacher again, become excellent and being able to, and one of the things we didn't really talk about is I think supporting our teachers my wife uh, is a teacher in Lawrence Massachusetts she loves working in the inner city uh, when we met, she was teaching in Chicago, taught there on the south side of Chicago for four years. And normally when I tell people she teaches in, um, in Lawrence, people say, oh, Lawrence, I'll tell you, those teachers have so much support when it comes to professional development, opportunities for, um, for guidance, for learning, really? to, in a way that you wouldn't believe. You know, again, she, in her middle school, she, she taught English for a number of, of years, English as a second language, and then she, she's an art teacher, so she had the opportunity to teach art, and so she said, of course I'm gonna do this, um, although she's, you know, so that's been really fantastic, but she reports to a dean of curriculum. There are two deans of curriculum in that middle school. One oversees, you know, the subjects are split up, and then they have that. Then they have someone at the district level that oversees it. So it's there's actually support to help. And the teachers really like it because they have that guidance. They have that support. And again, they have in Lawrence. How do we not have that in Manchester? And I just think it's that is unfortunate that we, again, don't have that level of support for our teachers because we need them to succeed for our students to succeed. Do you think the school district is top heavy? I've, I've heard some people say we got too much administration. And you know, you're, you're talking about having a, a dean within the school of curriculum. You know, well, you, well, and I, I think what you do, I think you repurpose the assistant principals. You kind of have, you know, again, what Lawrence, what they do is they have a, a dean of students. And some schools are doing this in, in New Hampshire. Um, they'll have sort of deans of students, deans of curriculum. They sort of have this process. But I do think that you look, and again, there's no, or again, talk about transparency. There's no org chart of the school district online. Again, that I could find. Type in the words organizational chart, can't find it. So again, you can't search for it on the website. It's probably not gonna be there. But you know, when you look about the district office, I think it's a lean office. Um, I do think that that hurts principals. I think it hurts teachers. So again, The backup resources that they you need. Know, again, a district of our size with our challenges, we have to be strategic. You know, I think we're not Concord, we're not Portsmouth, we're not Bedford. And I love that about Manchester. I love that Manchester's diverse. But again, we have to think of ourselves, we're an urban place. I know people who may have grown up here, you know, it's it's hard to think say that, because 20 years ago I would have thought, oh, Manchester, Boston's the big place. But in New Hampshire, we're a large community and we have to treat uh, that as such. And so again, I, th I think it goes back to the plans, but I I'm hopeful the superintendent will really come in, you know, on the school board, my, good, my big thing is gonna be, what are the 10 things that we need to do? And again, I think we need to talk to folks, what are those 10 things? And then we have to strategically work with people on the school board, and what are the priorities in this year? Can we only get two things done this budget year? One of, you know, talk about a specific thing. I know Eddie had asked about that. One idea that I would love to put in that piece, Lawrence does this, is that they do for February and April, they have ex what they call acceleration academies. And so for the first month, so for February, they'll have um, math, for example, and they have students come in. So it's vacation, right? Because in Lawrence, 
chances are you're not going to vacation and they have the uh, most um, at-risk students phones who need to sort of have that extra help and they come in teachers they give teachers a small stipend to work and usually a lot of the younger teachers want to come in and work right because you know, the veteran teachers don't really need that necessarily but they come in and they help these students for five days and it's all it's basically like a math camp and then you know in april they do english right they help them out you know that's something that we could look at you know again i think companies we, i yeah. think companies we could say you know again something that's innovative i think we could have a public private partnership i think companies would say you know what I'll give money for that because that's helping students. It's not just, oh, I need money for a search committee because people say that we're happy to do that, but that's really uh, not what we want. This is a direct pipeline into the brain of the kid coming in. I mean, this is a, but, a, a but very are, direct. But those are things that, again, we have to look at what other people are doing right. And when they, when my wife started to work at that school, they were the lowest performing school in the state. And they've had a huge swing over the last few years. They brought really? in teachers. And it's been really, wow. and again, they do sort of things. And again, I think it's, they really empower teachers. They give them the opportunity to be involved in, for example, even creating the behavioral management program and really having a voice in that. And again, I think, you know, those are specific things we can do. You know, again, people talk about how do we do, how do we help our students improve success? That sort of academy structure for that, those two weeks, that could be helpful. That would help students. Those yeah. are things that we should do. And again, I, I think that we could get private uh, folks to help uh, pony up and help support that at little to no cost taxpayer. And again, I think that could help students, but we're not having those conversations. What are those new innovative things? Again, I haven't heard it. Um, you know, I've talked to some teachers. They said, oh, I would love this. I think this would be great to be able to do it to help our students. So, yeah. You know, you mentioned something that was very interesting to me, and I certainly agree with, and that we need to have superintendents with, uh, with, uh, that are going to stay on the job and get to know the city. And, and uh, it takes a while to, to, you know, to ramp up to, to, to really be able to do a great uh, job. You can't flog them at every yeah. school board and, meeting and my, either, my, yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's what one I, way to keep them. That's what I was uh, thinking about. You know, we lost Dr. Vargas uh, much sooner than I expected we would when he came here with uh, great goals for, this, uh, for the district. And yet I, I, I get the sense that, the, you know, just the bitterness of the divide in the school board uh, kind of drained him of, uh, was, was, it, was it real, you know, real thing that uh, impeded him from feeling he could he could accomplish what he wanted to here uh, I don't know what you can do about that except I know you work very collegially with your fellow members of the school board if you're elected but do you think that's right that uh, there's, a, there's a real problem with the the division on the school board has been really uh, deleterious with the uh, yeah, so the I, school's the, the overall performance the, the culture matters I remember a meeting where I think it was the teacher handbook and dr. Vargas was presenting it, and there were school board members that were questioning the lyrics, and again, uh, the, questioning the words in the in the in the sort of thing, and the commas here and there. And he said, the lawyers have looked at it, and I think he made a comment of, we pay the lawyers a lot of money to do this. I trust them. And again, I think you can look at what's the policy, right? Is there a policy issue? But if we're talking about, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I would think if we've hired a lawyer in the school district, well, per, sure, gets paid a lot of money per hour or whatever the contract is. But again. You know, it's hard to have 15 bosses, but again, you have to have that culture where yeah. you want that person to succeed. And so that would be sort of my thing is, my first meeting with him is, what can I do for you to succeed? And just so you know, here's the things that I'm looking for. You know, again, I want to support you, but also at the same time, I want to hold you accountable, but in a friendly way to say, you know, this is your job, this is what you get paid to do, but we have to have progress. And what is your real plan? And if you have a plan, I want to support it. You know, but we need to have a plan and we need to be able to support it. And that's what's your goal line and how will you know you crossed it? You Ex know? <laughs> exactly. You know, I think what's your strategic goal and what are the action steps to get you there? What's the outcome? And again, you know, he's he's brand new. So let's give him some time to sort of like figure out where everything's going on. But I, I do think, you know, this next board, especially if I'm a part of it, I, I do believe that people will ask him questions. And I, and I think he has to have answers. I think he's very competent from the from the pro everything I've seen about him, I haven't met him in person, but everything I've seen I, I really like, and we have to have him succeed because yeah. that's how our students are gonna succeed. Well, we're just about run out of time, and as you mentioned, Gene, these, these hours go by really fast. You wanna just take a quick minute to talk about your campaign, how people can help you out, and what your how do they get competition is, and how to get in touch with you. And Perfect, uh, they can send me an email, Gene, G-E-N-E, -E, at Gene Martin, 
nh.com or they can go on my Facebook page. Feel free to send me a message. So it's Gene Martin School Board at Large. You can reach out to me there. Uh, my cell phone number, 289-6860. Feel free to give me a call. I've really loved hearing from folks and uh, whether you want to ask me more questions or um, any sort of thing or want a yard sign or any sort of th uh, thing like that, look forward to hearing from you. And, you know, I've loved getting out and hopefully I'll see you on uh, your doorstep uh, in the next few days. In weeks. <laughs> very good. Well, we're very fortunate to have candidates of your caliber wanting to serve our city, uh, the city side or the school side. It's uh, really uh, you're a dynamic guy, and it's been a pleasure to have you here. And, uh, and we certainly did well by not sharing your hour with anybody else because <laughs> you, you filled it up very, very well. Thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you, you to our caller. Go. And we'll, we'll be back uh, next week with another edition of the Progress Report. I believe we're going to have Joe Casey and Dan Weeks. We're going to talk about some of the energy issues involved in the governor's veto. Call the go call your representative. Ask them to over override the governor's veto on uh, education and energy and uh, the redistricting commission. Boy, I would like to have that overridden. Do that, folks, and we'll have a better state if you do it and we succeed. We'll see you next week.